<laughs> Good evening, one and all. Yes, I'm finally here. Thank you all so much for waiting. Apologies for that. Yes, my name is Donato, and here we are live. Obviously, I'm recording this on replay as well. For those of you who are live here, hello. The uh, chat is going nice and low and crazy, so hello, everyone. Welcome, one and all. Those who are new, and obviously, I'm saying some admin stuff just for the sake of the um, recording is that uh, if you are new here, please do click on that subscribe button and uh, give it the old thumbs up. And those of you who are watching live, give the old massive thumbs up as well. So that would be great. Yes, I'm here. Hooray! As I say, apologies for the delay. Let me have a little sip. I've been running around frantically. Yes, do give it a thumbs up, everybody. So hello, Dave. Dave. Evening all, Ben, Chris, Dave, uh, so, <laughs> Jess, everyone's there. Colin, hello, 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 everybody, everybody. Now, as Colin is on now live, I've got to give a big shout out to uh, Colin, who completed, he wasn't on live last week, and uh, he did apologise, naughty boy Colin. Let me close this laptop here. And uh, But two weeks ago, Colin completed his... 100th marathon and right now i think you're going through four virtual so big congratulations and big shout out to you uh, colin over up in uh, yorkshire way and fantastic achievement there so uh, well done to you big thumbs up to you colin on that amazing achievement so uh, keep up the good work both you and keith as well so i've got a number of things here that have been happening i'm going to do a quick summary the past week because there's a lot been going on yes whoop whoop Carl thank you yes so well done Colin big shout out to Cole 104 I've got a few list of announcements and then I've got me list of shoes yes I've got oh so many shoes here I mean if I was to show you all the boxes I'm going to go through the history of the shoes and my uh, well basically this little room here is rammed I went up into the loft and got all my uh, old shoes because I do keep them all because some of them is a bit of posterity for me so um I do hope, by the way, that you can see me and you can hear me OK, um, because what I see here, it looks a bit, um, the colour looks a bit different, shall we say. Maybe it's because of my top or whatever, but I thought this was like a white wall. It doesn't look very white to me. But anyway, that's the light in here in this room for tonight. Maybe it's my lap lit. <laughs> Laptop, lap lop. Anyway, I'll get my teeth right. So good evening, Rachel, as well. And Chris. Yes, it is a bit yellow. I don't know what what why it's yellow. It might be the webcam. But hey, this is the joys of the internet. I don't think I've hit a filter. I'm just happy to be here and that <laughs> I need a daylight bulb. I just need a bulb. It, it was looking fine. I've been zooming and Skyping all day with this, and it's been looking fine. But as always with technology, last minute. The stream that I'd set up wasn't working, so I had to set up a new stream and so on and so forth. But the joys of technology, hey, and uh, lemon filter, yeah, this is a special one. So maybe it's in sympathy to match with my bright green top. So I sort of sort of blend in. So all you can see is a series of bibs and my face because my arms sort of blend in with the uh, yellow but hey, we'll put this down as a, a, another first. So I did say that for tonight, We'll be educating you. We'll be entertaining you. When I say we, it's just me, but you guys chatting in there as well. And uh, yes, John, this is pretty bad, isn't it? Um, I don't know what to do with this. I could switch the light back on and off. But anyway, we'll persist. A bit of colour doesn't harm, does it? <laughs> anyway, what to do? What to do? So uh, let's keep it. Let's keep it going here. So as I say, I've got a number of announcements because it's been a pretty exciting week. And there's been lots of changes um, been happening with the uh, training plan. But I'll go through from in no particular order, just as I'd scribbled them down. And as I say, I've got about 11, maybe 15, 16 pairs of shoes to go through. But I've got a question for uh, you guys, which I'll, I'll ask at the end. But uh, during the past week, you may have noticed that I've changed my social media name to uh, Poet With Pace. That's right. Um, on both Instagram and Twitter, I think on, on the old Facebook, you can find me as donato.running. You can find me there. But I've set my uh, name up as Poet With Pace because since the very beginning, for those of you who know, I've been going for about five years now, a little over five years running. I always, uh, on a lot of my runs, I do 
sing myself, <laughs> sing myself, sing to myself. And I will be mentioning that, by the way, Dave. Uh, thank you for the congratulations. So uh, you've preempted point number, I think it's number four here. But anyway, I'll get to that one. Poet with pace. So I've got a little poem. So I'll be doing various poems as I go through this, and I'll include it with the uh, live chats because uh, I do love my poetry and I do sing along and make some songs, make up some lyrics as I go along. But here's a little ditty that uh, I had with regards to the poet with pace. You could say it's my signature poem. Even Evening, Ryan, you're bang on time, ready for the poem. So um, here we go. I'm the poet with pace, taking you to the heart of a race. So follow me now and I'll show you how to run with style, panache, elegance and grace. There you go. So that's my little ditty poem, and I'll be doing a few more as I go along. So Poet with Pace, you can follow me on the Twitter and Instagram. I know all of you do do follow, but those who are watching on recorded may not be following. Um, and yes, I do have a famous poet brother, Rachel. You may have met him. So uh, yes, it's probably in the family. So uh, a natural talent that we have. So a little bit of uh, randomness for you all. My brother, younger brother, I'm the eldest of uh, four. Uh, one of my younger brothers was the Poet Laureate of Birmingham, and he's hosted gigs at Glastonbury, none other, and many others. So uh, he's international well run. He's travelled all over the world doing his poetry and gigs. So, uh, yes, your children would have seen him at school. So, uh, yeah, my brother does go around. He goes around the world teaching poetry. So maybe you can teach me a thing or two. So please be kind. Although I'm an old geezer, I'm a pretty much a uh, beginner at all this. But, um, but, yeah, so that's the poetry stuff. And Grounded Republic, yes, my brand merch or whatever, groundedrepublic.com, for those of you who have been following it. There's a daily blog there going up, and there's people joining in. If you are bloggers or you want to join in, you can email me or contact me on here. And, uh, yes, fingers crossed, uh, Chris. So you can email me at myrunguru at gmail.com if you're interested in uh, blogging along there. So the brand is all about health, wellness, mental well-being, all that type of stuff. There's a lot happening there. It's not just a brand. It's more of a community where you can all join in and uh, have a happy, healthy lifestyle and maybe not look so yellow as we do here live. But anyway, that's uh, by the by. And another update. I had the absolute pleasure, and I know that uh, Lee is online now, Vet I Run. I had the absolute pleasure. If you've not seen this interview, yesterday I published it as part of uh, Remembrance Day, and uh, Sergeant Lee Davies and your name is Vet I Run. There he is. Clack, clack, clack. Yes, go see him. Click his name. Go follow him on the YouTubes. And I uh, had the absolute pleasure of um, having, I say a chat. Some people call it interviews, but it was more of a chat. And I think we could have chatted forever, couldn't we, Lee? And uh, great guy. Absolute inspiration. And his group, he has a, a massive group in uh, Facebook and he helps people with uh, mental health and uh, mental awareness and all that type of stuff. So uh, absolutely brilliant. He talks about his running. And i got to say, the thing that stands out, a lot of people, you know, people can uh, do the old social media and critique. And uh, yes, Cole, big respect for, uh, for Lee. So you can say that uh, everybody does things differently. But one thing that stood out, and Lee's a sub three marathon man, and he did, did recollect his story about, um, as a lot of you young guys, obviously I'm an old geezer. I wouldn't do this, but uh, I'm sure some of you have done this. The night before a marathon, you've done all the training. So you go out clubbing, don't you? And uh, <laughs> dancing. I think it was a stag night, wasn't it, Lee? Um, although you didn't drink, you were out dancing. So uh, didn't quite get the sub three, but then next time around he did. But he had an interesting fact there, and for some of you, you might uh, relate to this, but his longest long runs is 16 miles. And you might think a lot of people, well, you've got to do 20 miles, 22, 23. And um, it's certainly not the case. And it, and it works for Lee. So go and have a look at that uh, interview and you'll see some more hot tips and stuff on there. So uh, go back to that. There is on point number four, there is another interview coming up because it's been nonstop. I do love chatting to you guys like I'm chatting here live. I do chat to lots of people throughout the week on the old uh, Skype and Zoom and whatever. And some it's just a, a chat you know, one-to-one -one friendly chat like this. And uh, for some, I do record and uh, get published, you know, for those who want to get in touch and do that, then please do. But we can have just a chat as uh, as we do with others. So there will be another interview appearing with a very inspirational guy who basically, similar to me, I think uh, I was in hospital in February and this guy was in hospital in uh, May. And uh, 
very inspirational, went from there to completing four marathons. Yeah, not one. The doctors had told him that you wouldn't be able to do any marathons. He completed four marathons this year. So that's coming up on Saturday, I think, at the weekend. And uh, yes, my uh, lockdown four-week, four-week 10K challenge. Um, yeah, I don't know how you're bearing with, with the colour. I think I might need to put some uh, tan glasses. The four-week challenge, I am recording each day. Um, some of the days, like this morning, I completely forgot my uh, little trusty GoPro. It was so cold and uh, not good weather. My focus is on getting warm clothes on and completely forgot my camera. And uh, But I am recording each day, and you'll have a weekly update of how I'm progressing. But the plan has changed. Yes, the plan, the master plan has changed. And uh, so big shout out to Lee. Yeah, his subs jumped up to over 700, um, which is not bad. So I'm guessing a few hundred whenever who would follow me. So well done, Lee. But anyway, they follow you because it's your content, mate. Yeah, you're doing the work. So well done, Lee. Um, my plan has slightly changed. So I've had some help from uh, a local guy got in touch with me. He saw the uh, live stuff on here and uh, offered me his uh, services. So big shout out to Carl Wellborn. Absolutely brilliant. Supplying me a new four week plan. So it's still four weeks, still aiming for 10K at the end of this four weeks. So it's all part of the lockdown 2.0 10K challenge, whatever you want to call it. So I'm spending four weeks of uh, training specifically for a 10K for a number of reasons. One is obviously with lockdown, it gives us a bit of focus. But also being a marathon runner, I want to see how can I do with a 10K and doing some more specific uh, speed work. So it'd be interesting to see that. And it's been quite a progressive uh, week. And if you do follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters, I do post my updates on there if you're desperate to see what's been happening each day. And um, if you want to see the video updates as well, that'll be coming up on the uh, Sundays or Mondays here on the YouTubes. And Last but not least, yeah, so I'm going to start on shoes, but it's more to do with my everyday. It's a question for you guys. I need to know, right? So this is my Nike uh, everyday running shoe. This is the React Infinity. And uh, wow, it does look very yellow, doesn't it? <laughs> I dread think how some of the other shoes are going to look with this uh, yellow tinge. But um, these are coming to the end of their lives, yeah? So it's... Um, Almost goodbye to these, and they, and you'll see on the video, these have become squeaky, a bit like the uh, Tempo Next Percent that were squeaky from the start. These have now gone past, they've gone past about the 800 kilometer bit, and they're, the foam's not as good. It's not really holding well, and my feet don't feel comfortable anymore. So I think it's time to um, discard these and use them for walking. But uh, I'll be looking at, uh, <laughs> I'll be looking at, um, replacing these. So I'm looking at a brand that I've not used before, which is Adidas, Adidas. So my question to you, if there's any Adidas fans out there, Ultra Boost or Solar Glide? So every day running uh, for my long runs, slow, easy, softly, softly on the road. Um, what would you uh, recommend to have a think of that? So that's my question to you guys. If you are watching this on recording, leave it in the comments below. So here we are. I need another sip now. How's everybody doing? I'll have a quick catch up on the notes there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, guys. Loving the reading there. So back in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, I should have the music on, shouldn't I, you know, Star Wars. But, um, but yeah, by the way, I've got my uh, trusty cushion, which I've taken out my uh, London bus. Woo, woo, woo. Yes, obviously, uh, us Brits, we've got to show. And this is my number 15 Trafalgar Square, because we all know Trafalgar Square. So this is out of my um, Herbie van, uh, my dub called uh, Honey. And you'll see an update on that in terms of um, what's working on there. So Honey, yes. I'll be giving you an update. You'll see that on the weekly in terms of a song, but there is there is a song about that. But back in the galaxy far, far away, when I started running, um, I used to do a bit of walking, so I'd always walk to and from work. I'll come back to your comments, guys. I'm seeing there's a lot of uh, activity there in terms of brooks and light strikes and so on. I'll, I'll come back to that one. But in a galaxy far, far away, um, I always walk into work and I'd find somewhere. So work, depending on where my work was, I'd find somewhere close by if you're Monday to Friday, and walk into work. So I'd have a pair of walking trainers. 
and that's what I started my running in. So uh, I didn't go out and buy any uh, any fancy running shoes or anything specific like that. And I'd signed up to run the Birmingham Half Marathon for uh, Hibs Lupus Trust. So that was the goal. And that was back in June of 2015. So I had a good nearly five months of training for a half marathon. And the uh, shoes that I had were uh, <laughs> were from Sports Direct. As I say, these were just walking trainers. And they were a pair of carry mores that cost me 30 quid at the time. So um, yeah, just your basic carry more. I haven't got them because I had literally worn them down to pieces and have been uh, thrown away. So, uh, but if you were to Google, I think the latest one, I did have a look last night on uh, Google and looked on the uh, Sports Direct website and they look quite fancy and flash right now, but they weren't like that five years ago. They were pretty basic. But, um, but after a couple of weeks of running in those, I found that uh, if I'm gonna be training and I thought, oh, I've got a training plan now. So I downloaded a training plan from the Great Run series. I thought I better do some uh, proper training and then various friends on Facebook and social media saying you need to go and get gait analysis and all that type of stuff. I won't explain gait analysis. That'll be for another video. So I went to a running store. can't remember the name of a running store in London where I was working at the time. And uh, I got a pair of these, yeah? Obviously, the first running shoes has got to be a pair of these, yeah? The old uh, Nike. But which pair of Nike were they? Ooh, ooh. Yes, these were my first pair of what I call proper running shoes. Yeah. Now, for those of you who are Nike fans, you might notice the particular brand. Yeah. These are, sorry, when I say particular brand, particular model. Can you guess? Can you guess what it is? Which, uh, which Nike shoe is this? Yeah, they still make them. Obviously, they've given it's the number would have increased. But does anybody know what Nike this is on the live chat? Do you want to give out answers? Yes. Um, yeah, this is the Pegasus. Yeah. Now, this is the Zoom Pegasus 32. So these were the shoes, the only running shoes I used to train for the uh, Birmingham Half Marathon. So I trained in these. I think I went out three times a day as my training runs. And as everybody does when you train for your first uh, event, is all the training runs were the same speed. So I'd go out three times a week, whether it was a 20 minute run. So my training plan would say run to particular time. So it'd be 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, an hour here. So I'd run for a particular time. I think the longest run they said to run for an hour and 30, run for 90 minutes, I think, or 100 minutes. And uh, whatever distance it was, there you go. So yes, Dave, had every Pegasus since the 24. Blooming hell, Dave, you've been running a while, haven't you? So this is the Pegasus 32. I think they're up to Pegasus 37, which would explain the five years. There you go. Is it one every year they bring out the Pegasus or the pegs? I think they, uh, the slang word for uh, the Nike fans out there, they call it. So that was my first ever. And I trained in them, ran in them, raced in them. And I, I think I came in in a time... Birmingham half, it was about a 147, one hour 47. And uh, yes, I do keep my shoes. As I say, they are for posterity. Who knows? I might eBay them when I become famous. Hey, <laughs> but uh, I do love these, but they they served me well, but they, they'd they ran its time, <laughs> pun intended. But I did go and do a 10K after that because I thought I'd love to break the 45 minute 10K. So I went and done the West London 10K in these shoes and that was the end of the running i think i carried on doing a little bit of jogging but then things happened didn't they and i managed i that was my running done because uh and i won't go into the story because the shoes sort of relate to my running story and i will do a full video in terms of my running story and that was me done i'd done the event raised the money for charity i think i raised about 700 pounds for that half marathon and job done raise the money clap 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 i done that was my running done for forever yeah, because I had never had any intention. Hey, Tim, same with the Silver Shadows. Yeah, I had no intention ever of running a uh, marathon. Why? Because it's a blooming long way. I nearly uh, died running a half marathon. Why would I want to run that twice? So I could never see that. Isn't it interesting how we have a certain limitation in our brain? So I thought, no way. Um, but I was working down in uh, London at the time. And when I'd finished the half marathon, you know, you go back and your colleagues ask you, how did you get on? And uh, I remember my project manager at the time 
she said, oh, you should do London Marathon with a time like that. You'd be brilliant. So uh, as you do, you know, around November time of the year, just before London Marathon, you try and find places. But as we all know, you don't find those places. So um, cut a long story short, signed up for Brighton, got a place for Brighton and uh, downloaded a training plan. And that's when I decided to, um, I was still using the pegs at the time, but that's when I decided I want to get a pair of marathon running shoes. So I went for the full on, full proper gait analysis, not just jump on a treadmill and they look at you and away you go, but it was foot pad, all this and that. Yeah. And uh, at the running store, they come up with a pair of these. Yeah. Now, can you recognize the brand? I think that's a bit of a giveaway there. So, but which pair of Brooks were these? And uh, again, I need to stress these shoes that are going to come out of the box. These were the only pair of running shoes. So for those of you who watch regularly, I don't, uh, when I was starting as a runner, and they, hey, good, good guess, Dave, good guess. Yeah, but which ghost um, is that uh, with, we're all different levels of runners. We're all at different standards and so on and so forth. But me, as a beginner, I never saw a need of having multiple shoes or anything because at the end of the day, remember, all the training I was doing was at the same uh, speed. So why would you need any different kinds of shoes? I've never done any hill repeats, no tempo runs. I'll just go out and run. Just build up the endurance, run and run and run. So these were the shoes. And as correctly guessed by Dave, these are the ghost. But, <laughs> oh, i got to show these, man. Oh. So Brooks Ghost. These were my first ever marathon shoes. Yes, these were the shoes that I completed Brighton Marathon in 2016 in a time of three hours and 46, 47. So sub four, first ever marathon. And that was the only pair of shoes I had. I trained in them, uh, ran in them. I did wear out the uh, first pair and ended up getting the second pair. And these are the, oh, these might be the first pair, maybe not the second pair. There is another pair upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> in the loft. Um, so I think I've picked up the ones that I started with. So these were the first pair and then the pair that I actually ran bright in these uh, up in the loft. But uh, it is a brilliant shoe and it's fantastic all round shoes. Can't say enough good things about Brooks. You know, for those who are beginners, novices, they are a brilliant brand. But as I always say, for all shoes, everybody's feet are different. Yeah. So these are neutral shoes. So this is what I had and uh, it was just one pair. You wear them out. And then I went and bought another Ghost 8 um, because they worked for me and they were great. And that was my first marathon shoes. So, yes, I went from a Nike Pegasus for a half marathon to the uh, Brooks Ghost. Then came the second marathon. And, yes, now I'd gone for some gate analysis again. I was at the uh, London Marathon Expo after Brighton Marathon, and I thought, I could maybe do something uh, pretty good on time. So I, I, at the expo, I met up with various people I knew, and I saw some of the coaches who'd been working with me for the charity that I was running for. So uh, I was on a particular stand, so I thought, let's try the gait analysis there. And they found that I was slightly pronating or whatever. So I thought I needed a new pair, and uh, I went for these, the Socony Guide. Yeah. Now, as you can see, Again, there's a little support there. So this is a support for the time when I was pronating. That's what the video showed. So I was pronating. So these, once again, this was the uh, only pair that I was uh, training in. And uh, after a couple of months, I thought that uh, I would invest in a pair of Kimbaras because I started doing some uh, shorter distances and, and racing at shorter distances as part of the training for that. So I, was, I got the Kimbara 7. Let me show you these as I rummage around here in my uh, apartment. And you'll like these. Ta da! Kimbara. These are the Kimbara 7. And these are so super fast. They're absolutely gorgeous. So basically, I was training a little in these and getting some speed and doing the park run. So I took up a park run for the first time. And I think I ran a sub 20 in these and uh, and then got down to about 19 minutes. 
So the Kinvaris, fantastic for short distance and speed, but I'll go through and you'll see how the Kinvara has evolved over the years. So this came to Frankfurt Marathon, and I've still got the uh, chip, which I should have given back, but and I tell you, I was so excited to finish. I completely lost track of all time <laughs> and uh, didn't know I needed to take this back because when I ran my second marathon, I uh, basically reduced my time in the, in the five months, six months by 30 minutes. And unbeknownst to me, I ran three hours, 16. Unbeknownst to me that I didn't know. I just thought, yeah, it's a great time. I was so happy. And um, again, talking about the shoes, I won't talk about the uh, side story or whatever, but these, these were attached on here. I completely forgot about them. And uh, yeah, I got charged my 20 euros or whatever it was from Frankfurt Marathon. But from finishing that, that qualified me. I didn't know this. I had a message from a friend of mine. He says, oh, you do rise with the time that you have. You've now qualified for these four. That's right. I've got them there. There's New York, Chicago, Boston, and London. And so, yeah, I was absolutely over the moon. And I thought, wow, all right, I can really run properly here. <laughs> yes, my boxes are full of medals as well, uh, Colin, but I haven't got half as many as you. But uh, I do have some other boxes with, with medals, but I do keep the uh, shoes on there. So that was the guide. But then I found that I was blistering um, early on coming up to the next marathon. So for the third marathon, uh, which was Brighton again, I'd uh, bought some Mizuno Wave Riders, um, but those didn't work at all. Whilst I bought them and I'd run the marathon, I bought them literally about uh, two months before training them, but they really didn't work for me at all. And they'd been given, I gave them to one of my brothers, so he's running in them because he just wanted the free trains. I don't have those with me. But then this is the epic marathon where I talk about New York a lot because it is my uh, favourite marathon. And this is where you'll see something totally different because when it came up to Brighton, as I say, I won't give you all the, the back stories, but in terms of shoes, but basically I picked up a back injury and, uh, and it was quite a nasty one. And it took about three months to uh, recover. And I thought I need to sort out my uh, running gait and become more of a true runner. And I found and a few people recommended that um, zero drop shoes, yeah? So this was the brand that I went for, Ultra. Now, Ultra are zero drop running shoes and uh, helped me with my running form. So rather than running in the Mizumo massive stack and elevate, I was going down to zero drop shoes. Yeah. So I had, um, so as I was coming back into the running, let me show you the pair that I didn't use for now. I use these for training. When you look at these, these are the ultra paradigm. Now, uh, th this is what happens to shoes. So the beauty of the ultra, because I was blistering quite a lot on other shoes as well. These have a wide toe space. And uh, I've got to say, for me, I still call these my moon boots. Now, these are the paradigm 1.5. And I know that would have advanced to other paradigms. But the beautiful thing about these, and it, it is big, it is clunky, it's not the lightest now, but you, you remember, we've got to go back to 2017 now. So we're in 2017. So these are three years, and these were old at the time. I think these cost me £40, and they were the old, as again, I always buy the old models. So these were £40, and I was uni using these because they gave me maximum cushion and also zero drop, which helped me with my running form and keep my feet feeling more true. And I remember running the uh, Isle of Man half marathon in these, racing in these. That's right. Would you believe it? And I completed it in just over 90 minutes. I think it's 91 minutes, 92 minutes, one hour, 32, um, which was a, a not a PB um, because I had run an earlier PB in the Kinvara 7s. But uh, this one, fantastic. Now, I think my dad uses these for his gardening, hence why they're a bit muddy. So always recycle the shoes, upcycle or whatever you want to call it. But coming on to the next marathon shoes at New York, it was the Ultra Escalante. Nice foam, zero drop. And these were pretty minimal. And also it was the first uh, marathon I ran without um, calf socks because I always used to use calf socks because I was 
led to believe they help support and do all of that. And I think they do for some people, but I found it was more of a placebo. Um, so I ran without any uh, support calf sleeves or anything like that and these zero drops. And despite having been injured weeks before, you'll know the story about New York. I came in in the time of just over three hours, 20. I think it's three hours, 20 and 10 seconds or 20 seconds, which meant I missed out on qualifying for London Marathon by the 20 seconds. But hey ho, which is the good news that I've now qualified for 2021 London Marathon. Yeah, age group. I forgot that in the news, didn't I? But I know Dave and the guys mentioned there. So, yes, this was New York City Marathon marathon shoes, and they were fantastic. There is more modern models of the Escalante, but I found zero drops were working really well for me. And uh, yeah, so I carried on with those. So that was the Ultra Escalante. But then disaster struck again when I was coming into the uh, spring marathons. And uh, basically, um, the shoes I was using at the time, I won't mention the model, they weren't the Ultra. Um, I was using other ones that were um, just a little bit above zero drop. I think they had two mil drops as opposed to zero. But um, where I was and the training what I was doing, I think I caught a bug as well. You know, who knows? Well, I won't talk about the bugs that are going on right now, but um, I wasn't too well and whether that contributed to it. So I'm coming to Boston and I had London the uh, week after or six days later and it was the big raining one. So I needed shoes that I was comfortable with that I'd used before. So basically I went back to my neutral Saucony ride. So I used these at Boston and London uh, just to get me through the race. You know, I didn't race them, didn't race the races, if that makes any sense. I just ran them to finish. And, uh, and it was pretty tough. The uh, Boston one, obviously, torrential rain, wind, snow and all that jazz. And then six days later to the uh, glorious hot sunshine in uh, London. So that was going back to the Saucony ride. I do love me Saucony. And, uh, and I love them so much that when I came to Chicago, so there you got Chicago, this is what I had. And uh, again, pretty minimal, but I was sticking to four mil drop. So I found that uh, when I come to racing, the four mil drop really works for me. And these are the Freedom ISO. Now, I ran a time of three hours and six minutes in these at Chicago. And I found them absolutely fantastic. The foam is really good. The only downside is the grip is not good in the wet, which it was at uh, Chicago. So, um, but as a comfy running shoe that made me feel I needed to run fast, these were fantastic. And I can't say enough good things about it. So good that uh, I had the ISO 2. Here they are. So you can see the difference. They seem to have... Um, with the later model and there's an ISO three now, they seem to, what I use the word chunk them up. They make them a bit more chunkier. And uh, these are great for me all round training, which I was doing. And these have gone over a thousand miles now. So um, yes, <laughs> absolutely. A thousand miles. And these ones, I'm sure I could dig these out again, but they're too slippery on the wet for me now. I think the grip has uh, gone quite a lot. So again, I trained in these, I ran in these, raced in these. So, you know, I didn't keep any shoes specifically for racing. And I know that some people do do that these days. So that was Chicago. Yes, the Kinvara ISO 1. Now, we're coming into last year now. And uh, Freedom ISO 1 were fantastic. And uh, I thought they've changed the Kinvara. So I thought, let's have a look at the Kinvara because I didn't like the ISO 2. They seemed a bit more heavier. So I looked at the new Kinvaras. And here they are, the Kinvara 10. And if you look at these, these are much more chunkier than the 7. So this is the Kinvara 10. This is the Kinvara 7. These are much more lighter than these, yeah? And certainly felt faster. So I thought, why not try these for marathons? So I did, and uh, they felt fantastic. And I do feel like I'm going zoom, zoom, zoom for a marathon in these. Kimbara 10, and these were my go-to marathon shoes last year for both the um, Chester and Malaga. 
And uh, yeah, so that was the Kinvara 10. Last but not least, I haven't got the pair with me because uh, I did uh, send them back, which was the Nike Zoom Next Percent, Zoom X Next Percent. And the reason why I sent them back is not that I had any issues, is there's no racing or anything going on. So whilst I bought them just before the um, Dorney Lake Marathon, and uh, they didn't seem to really work for me. They, they, I didn't felt for me, maybe I'm, I'm what they call a non-responder, which for some people, depending on how the shoe's designed, we might be non-responders. So whilst a lot of the press and everything say that you're going to go quicker and you get 4% quicker, it certainly wasn't the uh, case for me. I feel more comfortable in those Kinvaras. I'm exploring other shoes at the moment as well um, to see how they're working. And uh, speaking of exploring... Right, my current shoes, as everything falls off down the ground, because I've got so many stacked up here. These, Fast Witch 9, as the word implies, these are so super fast. So you see, they're a bit muddy now. So I have done a, re a run in these, training run. And this is what I'm going to be using for my 5K, 10K, half marathon races, um, because they feel fantastic. I know some people have run marathons in these, but I need to stress that, again, everybody's different. And some people, these lighter, less shoes may not work as well. You might need the more stack and comfort and so on. But um, these felt fantastic. I went, on, and you'll see on the video update on the Sunday, I went on the one mile repeats, which I've not done in nearly three years before. And these felt fantastic, absolutely gripped beautifully well. And uh, yeah, I felt like a fast witch, hey, pun intended. So that's my latest and greatest shoes that uh, I'm running with. So do you have any favorites yourselves? Leave it in the comments here. Let's uh, hear what you have to say. And uh, whilst you're thinking of what your favorite shoes are, leave it in the comments here. I do like the, uh, the comments that you've all been leaving there. And uh, Tim, as you said, uh, right down sweatshop in Teddington <laughs> and the latest Nike for about £30. Is that currently now, is it? Yes. So uh, I did have a, uh, a bit of, uh, you know, I'll add a little, a little another poem for you all. Um, and again, I can't remember when I wrote this, but I've got like pages and pages of uh, stuff that I've been writing over the, uh, the few years of this. I've even got, wow, look at this. So... Uh, Race results from uh, Isle of Man. Wow. This is where I came. Uh... <laughs> yes. So this was the actual time. There you go. When I ran in. I've put them down now. Oh, here we are. Maybe I should put this in here. Yeah. Yeah. I think I will put it in there. That's the time I ran. Although my dad does his gardening in these now. So that wouldn't really work. But a um, little poem here. Just a bit of fun one. And this was about Mo Farah. Yeah, so uh, I know he's some people's favorite, lots of favorite, but Gabby's going in, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. So that program's going ahead um, despite the global pandemic. So, but this was written a few years ago and uh, what I've, hopefully it works. This is just live, so proper live TV. So Mo doesn't run slow because he is a pro. Been running many years, shedding a lot of tears bringing joy and laughter to us all as he knows how to put on a show. There you go. So uh, on that note, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. Um, it is just me, and I do appreciate the support that all you guys are coming on live doing this. And apologies for the little glitch and the uh, yellowness. I've got to see what's going on there. But that's the joys of technology and YouTube and the tech that I have here. So. Um, Thank you all so much for coming on. Feel free to leave the uh, comments on there. Give the thumbs up to the uh, video for those of you who are still watching. And I've very much enjoyed. And as I say, I do appreciate the support that you guys do coming on live. There will be another one this time. Same channel, same place. Lockdown 2.0, episode three. I haven't decided the uh, subject yet, which is a question to you guys. Yeah, question of the day. What would you like me to cover in next week's show? So uh, for those of you watching recorded, leave it in the comments below. If you're watching it live, have a little think about it. If you want to put something immediately on there, put that on. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, yes, so thank you, Cole. It's, 
100 marathons. Are you still using the same shoes, though, Colin? Tell me what, what brands of shoes have you worked through for those 100 marathons? And, um, and yes, Cole, the uh, Chicago is still my PB, three hours and six, um, because yes, that's, that's what it is. But hopefully uh, we can get a bit quicker next year when we get some races back. Um, it will be great to have a, another go and see if I can bash that PB. But right for now, I'm focusing on that uh, 10K. And, uh, and I'll be updating you, as I said, on the weekly updates, how that training's going, but also on this live weekly stuff on there. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to have my little drink here because my uh, voice is going. And uh, looking at myself here in, in yellow, it's been... <laughs> uh, maybe I need to get some sunglasses on. But um, so... Thank you for uh, for that, Dave, Colin, everybody, Chris, Lee, all of you there. See you all soon. And as I mentioned, for those who are watching on recording, if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that subscribe button, wherever it is down there, there, there. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Same time, same channel, same place, 7 p.m. Thursday, where it will be another interesting topic. And I'll have some more poems and updates for you all. Thank you all so much. bye bye Love you all. Mwah. Now, where's the yellow? I bet it switches off right now when I do it again. Hey, bye bye bye, guys. <laughs>